everyone, and welcome to another game of World of Warships. Today's replay is from Valkyrie AB, and he is in the Shimakase, a tier 10 Japanese destroyer. He is on the map Crash Zone Alpha in a three-point domination game. So it's a tier 10 battle, there are a few poor tier 8s in here, and an enemy Smolensk has just been dealt with. Isn't that lovely? Now the only raider seems to be a Chapayev, and there's no carry. Oh, and even more lovely, he just got a uh, torpedo hit on most likely the enemy destroyer there. So, we know the uh, Chapayev is at the A cap, so there shouldn't be a threat of radar, but he basically is ideally positioned here, right? When we look this way, he can run away. So he went in here, made a turn, now he has an escape route. Always have an exit strategy. So if there were suddenly torps appearing, or if the raider would have been here, he would have been perfectly fine. Now, who is probably not so perfectly fine is that Edinburgh. That Edinburgh has made a mistake that he's... I mean, he's trying to slow down here and deploy smoke, but that means the enemy had quite a few free shots. And that's, that's just... Uh, when you... Uh, yeah, that was expected. Basically, if you are in a British uh, cruiser, you have to keep in mind that if you are going too fast, you can't just deploy smoke and be immediately invisible. You have to slow down first, and that takes a while. And you're a very easy target while you're doing that. So if you have like four ships shooting you while you're trying to slow down and deploy smoke, you're most likely just dead. So you either need to be slowing down before you get spotted, or just be really inside smoke before you're close enough to get spotted. Well, anyway, so the friendlies are one ship behind, but they do have two caps, so that's lovely. What's Valkyrie going to do now? Well, there, there seems to be a nice little corridor here, filled with enemy ships. Would be a shame if there were 15 torps traveling down this way, right? So he's moving to a position where he can most likely torp those guys. Now we have the other destroyer, the Lightning, going for the B cap. We don't need both destroyers there, so like taking care of... Those guys might just be a reasonable strategy. Now, so far, it seems like the, the teams are fairly evenly split. We have uh, well, five friendlies here. There seem to be, well, if that, that uh, destroyer is still here, or five enemies here. And of course, the friendlies have one less ship right now, but basically, both flanks are pretty evenly uh, populated by the teams. Well, and here go the torps. Now, uh, Hindenburg most likely is carrying Hydro. The Horn India is also most likely carrying Hydro. I mean, uh, defensive fire is so bad these days that there is really no reason to equip it over Hydro. But of course, there is no guarantee that the Hydro is currently running. And oh, this looks like some torp hits, but oh, can it get a third? No, I don't think so. So Hindenburg is low, but still floating. Torps could technically still go and hit the Sumo, but they are spotted by now, so everyone is going to avoid them. And look at that, the enemy destroyer is trying to take the sea camp. Also, the friendly forces at A have been a bit decimated, it looks like A is going to fall. But, you know, maybe Valkyrie here can actually detect the enemy. How is that pronounced? Ulant? I'm probably butchering that name anyway. Kirpitzio is low, Hindenburg is still low. If the friendlies could, like, take care of the Hindenburg, that would be lovely. Now, pan-European destroyers don't have a smoke screen. Oh, uh, I don't think I would have used my gun. I mean, stopping this Hindenburg from escaping is a very good idea, but, you know, he was burning anyway, and he just revealed himself here for a reason, it feels like. But... The enemy destroyer has started a gunfight, and well, you see, pan Europeans they don't have a smoke and they aren't really that fast, so this guy is probably going down. I mean, he's holding his fire now, trying to dodge, but. So that means the ships are now equal on both sides. The friendly still have more caps and points, so not looking too bad yet. Now we have two enemy ships here who are trying to retreat. On the other flank we have two friendly ships who are hopefully trying to retreat. So still actually pretty even in that regard. 
It's just that the friendlies do have, well, more points and the cap more, so do have the upper hand right now. And he's announcing in chat that he's going to... I mean, it's not like as a Shimakasi you could do much against the Sumo de Sol, and let's speed this up here because he is basically just repositioning right now. If you have ships like that that are sailing away, there is nothing you can do as a torpedo boat. Any torpedoes you launch are going to be outrun by those guys. You have to get really close in order for any chance for those torpedoes to catch up. Or hope that they change course and... Actually, you know, maybe we can go a bit to regular speed here. So he has decided to use his guns here and help the whole. I mean, he's still pretty healthy. And the drone needs to go down. I personally, I'm always a bit... Oh, he is not even detected, so... Don't mind me saying anything. If you're not detected, then it's obviously a good choice. It's just... There are a lot of ships down here who might have shots at him. And as a destroyer... You know, your hit points can drop rather quickly if you have three or four guys shooting you. So you always have to make uh, decide if it's worth it uh, sacrificing your hit points there. Because, for example, there is still an enemy gearing. And if he ends up in a gunfight with that gearing, which... Very important to still have quite a few hit points left. Anyway. There is a uh, core first approaching. And so he is trying to consider both. Like the right now the prediction is that core first would just sail behind his island. But there is a lot of uh, reason for this core first to not do that, because core first might be coming this way or he might be positioned here just to fire his guns. So I probably would have just tried for and yeah. He's agreeing with me, it looks like. Although the Kufus is already slowing down quite there a bit. But just carpet topping this corridor seems like a reasonable choice. As I said, the Kufus had very little reason to just actually continue behind this island. Not that this means he's like... Using a logic to predict the enemy movements has always the flaw that a lot of people don't act logically. Anyway. So he has found the Chapayev, he's currently raided. Chapayev raider doesn't last that long. And he got a few torps into that Kurfus, so that worked marvelously. And it looks like maybe he even gets a hit on the Montana there. So the raider is no longer... <laughs> well, and that would be a double strike. Uh, that was certainly helpful. Yeah, and I think he could use his uh, repair now. Uh, very... Good discipline on his repair there. I'm usually one who repairs way too early in my destroyers because I'm full, like, the, the cooldown isn't that long on the damage con on destroyers, so I'm foolishly oftentimes just thinking, you know, it's going to be ready again soon anyway. And then I misuse my damage con. So, both teams have four ships left. But the friendly still have the points advantage. Now the enemy is trying to take the B cap, but you know, there might be some torpedoes who will try to solve the problem. They are almost reloaded. Now the biggest threat here is the Chapayev. The Chapayev Strader will be ready at some point. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. There won't be any more Chapayev Strader. Now there is a destroyer inside the smoke screen and there is a Chambard. Now depending on the Chambard's movement, those torpedoes have a chance to hit both. It looks like he's trying to... Uh, uh, well, keep in mind that he probably has this Chambard selected. We can't just see that in a replay. So those torps where it looks like he wanted to carpet bomb the smoke screen, but they also might hit the Chambard if the Chambard decides to make a turn here. Well, and there is the gear. Well, there was the gearing. And exactly. Now the Shabbat is exactly making that turn that would have put him in the torpedoes path, although he turned a little bit too late, so it was only one torp hit. And there's a high caliber. Now the friendly is lost the center but it's a three against two and there is still a points advantage six minutes still to go oh and we has it looks like we have a very healthy montana there still 
Conqueror just took care of the Ibuki. Yeah, this, this is basically all that's left is to farm this shop out. It's how, how healthy is that Conqueror? Very healthy battleships at the end of the game. Who would have thought, right? So, uh, the friendlies are even split out that they could have a crossfire on a shop out, although the islands are probably blocking that one. But we will see. Maybe he is just going to eat some more fish. Let's increase the speed here a little bit. Let's block the camera course, otherwise fast movement might give people vertigo. So, here are the troops. And not looking too bad. As a flooding, and that salvo will see the deal. Well, here we are with the results, and Valkyrie earned himself 2740 base experience. Uh, nicely done by him there. He achieved a double strike, a crack, and a high caliber, scoring 246,000 points of damage, sinking five enemies. And yeah, hope you enjoyed watching this. And I'll see you guys next time.